Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Let's talk about what's happening this morning as one winter system moves out of the Carolinas with mostly rain and ice, and we start focusing on our next system. So I want to get to what's happening right now because pretty large storm system. I mean, we haven't seen a good winter storm like this in a couple of winters. And unfortunately for the snow lovers, this was not much of a snow threat and bad news for everybody, honestly, it was a miserable cold rain as well as ice. Ice is like the worst thing ever. I mean, you just don't want to see ice, but you can see we're still kind of wedged in a little bit. Temperatures for the most part are above freezing. Look at Boone up to 43. So you see that warm air loft coming in and that's how you get freezing rain. It's warmer above our heads than it is at the ground. So that warm air is surging in. It's the surface temperatures that are still near freezing. So still some icy spots north of Interstate 40. It's really what you get towards the Virginia border. But honestly, most of this is just a cold rain. Now, that being said, Enjoy the brief warm-up because on the back side of this, cold air starts spilling back in. In fact, this is Arctic air that's going to be spilling into the eastern half of the country. And this is going to lay the groundwork for what's going to head our way. Now, what's interesting, and these are things the models don't always hint at and like why you got to focus on more than just looking at snowfall maps in model data, is you notice right here, there's deep snowpack on the ground from this system. And there will be snowpack on the ground probably all the way to the nation's capital in here. You already see how this is affecting temperatures where there's snow on the ground, zeros and sub-zero temperatures, right? So this Arctic air mass, which is going to be over us, actually has some refrigerant now on the ground. And that, that could be key. It could be, I will say, later this week, because what's going to happen is a dip in the jet stream is going to develop here, and it's going to be cold here all week and fast. In fact, we're going to get a reinforcing shot of cold air Wednesday night into Thursday. So we're going to have a long duration cold snap. And that's going to keep the ground cold. It's going to keep the atmosphere cold. And so that increases the potential for some wintry weather, which eventually could form down here. We're going to see a low pressure system form later this week and then track up here. Now, there's still a lot of details to work out. We don't know how strong the system is. We don't know the exact track, but the potential is there. And that's really the key part. So let's get a little bit into the details of this. Um, let me go back here real second. We'll go. All right, I had to jump around a little bit here. So this is something, and this is a little bit of science here, a little bit of what we look at. And really what I'm focusing on here is not just snowfall maps, but the pattern that we're talking about. So the storm that we're worried about here um, for later this week, you kind of see this. This is called vorticity. It's basically energy in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Piece of energy in the southern branch of the jet stream, which is down here. Northern branch of the jet stream is up here. There's a piece of energy here. Watch as these two kind of sync up and try to get together as we go through the week. So this is Wednesday, Thursday, and then by Thursday, look at this, we've got kind of a low pressure system developing over Texas and trying to travel to the east. Now it's got what we call positive tilt to the trough. This positive tilt means that the dip in the jet stream and the dip here is like this. That's positive, neutral is like this. If the, if the tilt's back to the west, uh, we call that a negative tilt. And that's when you get big storms and obviously severe weather because you get a lot of wind shear. But you see this thing moving to the east. And the blue line, by the way, is kind of the, the rain snow line as we get into early Saturday morning. So you could see we've got a storm system and the rain snow line close. So this is all going to be based on track. This thing tracks just a little bit further south. It's going to tug that cold air with it. If it tracks a little further north, it's going to push the warm air with it. But the fact that we've got cold air and snowpack to the north all week does give me some confidence that there is going to be enough cold air. To me, the big question marks here is how fast this system is moving and the track. The track is still really, really uncertain. You guys know these are the patterns, right? We've been watching this pattern since last week. If you follow me, pattern recognition, it's been there for the Southeast. The last couple of days, including today, we're trending up. It's still there. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to be a ton of snow. We're not talking about amounts, the timing, the snow, sleet, ice mixture. We're just talking about a winter storm in the area so we're still talking about it but starting later today we're probably going to start transitioning to this where we can start talking about timing in fact i'm not comfortable talking about whether it's snow sleet or ice because that's still uncertain but the timing is coming into a little bit better clearer picture for late friday early saturday so think more saturday morning possibly than more so friday so that's kind of the thinking so let's look at a couple other things the ensembles um this is a 24 hour one inch chance of snow right? So I'll kind of pull this up a little bit so you can see the bottom. The bottom shows you the percentages here. I try to make this easy to view. So let me try to stretch the screen a little bit here so you can see. There we go. So these are the percentages at the bottom. This is the one inch probabilities, right? One inch of snow. So you can see the system coming out of Texas and notice kind of where that line is where there's the rain snow line. 
we get to Saturday afternoon. So you see over the Carolinas, this is from the European Ensemble, not one model run, 51 simulations of the same guidance. You see the kind of areas in this kind of greenish. You're in this anywhere from 30 to 50 percent range for the Piedmont. The cutoff seems to be Columbia. So there, there, there's something you can glean from this, right? That we've got a system in the area. It's still showing up um, where this line here it could shift north or south. The track right now to me seems a little bit further north than yesterday, but it's still there, right? We look at the GFS, which is the American version of the same thing. 31 versions of this, not just one single run. It's a little further north, but still keeps some of the Piedmont more maybe in the 10 to 30% range. So you kind of see where those ranges are. So when you look at this product, which is from the Weather Prediction Center, kind of the same thing, kind of all put into one product. You can see the, uh, again, remember the light green is actually 10 to 30 and the blue is 30 to 50. So these are ranges, it's not a specific um, percentage. So you can see, yeah, still showing up here. And as we go into Sunday, moving up the East Coast. So yeah, there's still a lot of this showing up and in fact, we can look at the ensembles just for Charlotte, right? I'll move my head out of the way. Um, and again, these are the 51 versions of the model. You see all 51 of them, including the control. Let me move my head back here. You could see this time frame, uh, Friday, Saturday. Almost every ensemble member has some snow, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maybe eleven out of the 51 don't. That's pretty good consensus. And, and right now the mean is about one inch. And yeah, there's some mess here, but that this is, see, this is, this is what we look at. This is what I look at from an ensemble standpoint. When I see more than 30% in there, I go, okay, that's something to watch. This, yeah, that's, that's just nonsense in the long range. This is more of what we're watching. It's just not the European. Remember, the European's a little more bullish on this. If we look at the GFS, which is a very similar product here. Whoops, let me scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see, yeah, same time frame. Not as many members, but there's only 31 here. We still got, you know, enough, 30% of them showing a trace or some kind of snow there. So that's what we're focused on looking at towards the end of the week. And again, as we get closer, we'll have a better idea. But what I can tell you today, yeah, it's still there. Everything's going to hinge on where does this thing track, right? So the next couple of days, it's all going to be focusing on where this is. The storm is still there. The pattern is still favorable, but small changes. Remember the difference between rain and snow here is literally a tenth of a degree. I tell people all the time in the Carolinas, why is it so hard to forecast snow? I'm not forecasting whether it's going to be between 30 and 33. You literally have to forecast the difference between 32.0 and 32.1. And not just at the surface, at 5,000 feet, at 10,000 feet. It's very, very complex. And to get snow here, the track is so crucial. Someone asked me yesterday why it's so hard, and I think this is a really important part. You want to be close enough to the warm air to get moisture, to get deep or a heavy snow chance, but you don't want to be too close that it turns to rain. You would also don't want to be too far into the cold air where it's so dry that you barely get any snow. So you've got to thread this needle with being close enough to the moisture to get it for snow, but also cold enough to make it snow, if that makes sense. So. That's what we're watching. This will be a long, everyone's talking about it, but obviously after they kind of left it to, to die this weekend, even though we didn't and I didn't because the pattern never changed. That's the thing. Cold pattern all week, big trough of low pressure. I think this is the overarching thing. We've got this big dip in the jet stream, right? That is developed here. It's brought tons of cold air. You know, this is the system today going through the Midwest. We've got cold air. This is, we're not going to be lacking for cold air over the Eastern half of the country, right? Cold air is here. We just need a system to interact with it. So it's another long vlog. Sorry, but there's a lot of details on this. Just remember, here's where we are right now. The forecasting rules I've had these for over a decade that I use. I'm glad to see a lot of people adopting them as well, which I love um, because this really is the way to approach long range forecasting. You could still talk about things, but the specifics, right? Um, I, I, I joke. I love sports, right? I, I love sports analogies. Um, a lot of people try to take full court shots the second they inbound the ball and think that's a way to play basketball. Hey, why don't you inbound it and get it to the other side of the court before you take your shot? And oftentimes, that's what people are doing with these long range snowfall forecasts. They're basically inbounding the ball under their own basket and heaving a full court shot. And when they miss it, people are wondering, why did they miss it? Because there's an easier shot. 
Wait till you get closer, run an offense, get closer to the basket. Doesn't mean you can't shoot a three or even a long three, but let's get it to the other side of the court first. So uh, in all things, the farther out you are from something, whether it's sports, golf, basketball, when you're farther away from that end zone or that basket, it's harder to score. And there's no reason to take the long shot unless it's a desperation and we're not desperate. So we can run the offense here and get the ball closer to the basket before we take our shot and we will make it. And this way, it's a better way to do it. So that's why we forecast this way. And it just everybody wins in the end and it just makes things much easier.